Greetings and welcome back to Son of the Cinema. Uh, last week, of course, I reviewed The Thing, John Carpenter's 1982 classic, and I failed to mention that, of course, it was the 40-year anniversary of The Thing. Uh, quite remarkable that it still stands up after 40 years and countless viewings. So I decided to review another 40-year-old movie that came out in 1982, another cult classic, Walter Hill's uh, brilliant 48 Hours starring Nick Nolte and Eddie Murphy. Now, of course, I saw this movie when it came out and was absolutely enthralled. And in a way, this film is the beginning of the buddy cop genre, although it was predated by Freebie and the Bean. It is the, really, the, I suppose, the first commercial, the first really identifiable uh, buddy cop movie. And, of course, spawned countless um, uh, uh, similar movies like the Lethal Weapon series, like uh, Bad Boys, you know, you name it. So many buddy cop movies. But yet, in a way, it's not a buddy cop movie because the one cop, in inverted commas, is actually a criminal. Um, this movie kind of uh, started in the mid-1970s where Walter Hill was directing a movie called Hard Times and Roger Spottiswood was the editor and he wanted to break into directing. So Walter Hill suggested he write a script and they had already been talking about an idea of uh, a, a, a cop that has to kind of catch a criminal and so he finds a criminal who's incarcerated and breaks him out or gets him released uh, for 48 hours to catch this guy. And so that was the premise. And then uh, various problems, of course, ensued and they weren't able to make it. And then it got re revived um, later in the late, 90, uh, late late 70s. And then they decided that Walter Hill would direct it. And Roger Spotters would, of course, they used his script. Um, this is such a remarkable movie. You know, it's not... The storyline is very generic. It's there's nothing, you know. The, the story's been told many times. What makes the film absolutely unique is the take on the subject matter, the script, which is incredibly witty, uh, incredibly clever. Um, had five writers on it. The main ones, of course, being Walter Hill and Roger Spottiswood. It's sparkling dialogue, and of course, the charisma of the leads. If you can find two leads with the chemistry in a buddy cop movie, that is what sells it. And the chemistry between Nick Nolte and Eddie Murphy is off the charts. Interestingly enough, this was Eddie Murphy's first film. It was his debut movie. Um, he'd never made a movie. He'd only been on Saturday Night Live. And initially they wanted Richard Pryor to do it, and he wasn't available. And the second choice was Gregory Hines. He also wasn't available. And then one of Walter Hill's friends suggested Eddie Murphy. She'd seen him on Saturday Night Live. And so they brought him on board. And the producers were initially uh, very skeptical. And in fact, as the story goes, throughout the filming, um, the producers were really concerned that the movie wouldn't be funny enough. And they kept rewriting um, the dialogue, trying to create funny lines for Nick Nolte, for Eddie Murphy, to kind of lighten the violence of the movie. Because as is Walter Hill's want, his movies are always quite violent. A uh, big fan of Peck and Paw, and you can see those influences in the movie. Uh, I think he always wanted to direct, redirect the Wild Bunch, Walter Hill. And in fact, in a way, he did so in the 80s. He did a movie called Extreme Prejudice, which I saw when I was in the army. Also with Nick Nolte, incredibly violent. And the the final showdown pretty much mirrors the, the famous showdown in the Wild Bunch. Um... Anyway, yeah, the film was not without its problems. Um, the producers, I think it was Michael Eisenberg, was one of the producers, was concerned it wasn't going to be funny enough. So they were constantly wanting to fire Eddie Murphy while they were shooting. Walter Hill and Nick Nolte fought to keep him on. They basically rewrote his part. Right till the final days of shooting, they were changing the dialogue. And uh, he really did a sterling job to, as his first um, debut movie, to get through it and put his own stamp on it. And in fact, he got nominated for a Golden Globe for um, Most Promising Newcomer. So that, in a way, was a testament to a star had arrived. And honestly, it is a star turn by Eddie Murphy. He dominates um, many, many scenes that he's in. Um, he plays, the, obviously, the funny man to Nick Nolte's straight um, man. And... 
it works a treat. You know, it it is so funny. The 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 uh, the chemistry between the two actors is wonderful. Uh, there's so many great scenes in this movie. But let's talk about the story. So basically, uh, a guns, a psychotic criminal played by James Remar, breaks uh, away from a chain gang and reunites with his old buddy, Billy, Billy Bear. And they want to get this money that they had stolen from a robbery. And they end up holding up at a hotel. And by a strange coincidence, uh, Jack Cates is Nick Nolte's uh, um, character, this cop. He goes with a couple of agents to a hotel to look up somebody else in room 27 and ends up being Guns. There's a shootout and both cops are killed and Nolte's gun is stolen by Guns. And so they obviously are um, desperate to find him because nobody likes a cop killer and the cops are just on the warpath to find this guy. And they discover that uh, in doing their research that one of Guns' ex-partners who's now in jail is Reggie Hammond, played by Eddie uh, Murphy and they reckon if they can uh, free him for 48 hours he can lead them to guns and so begrudgingly he's teamed up with Jack Cates and they go around trying to track down guns and it is just uh, from the get-go they are rubbing each other up the wrong way and it's a wonderful relationship because it just it's a classic kind of buddy cop goes from immediate dislike um, fighting with each other uh, to kind of grudging respect to eventually a real kind of camaraderie and 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 um, buddyship between the two of them, and uh, it's a joy to watch. Um, there's so many wonderful scenes in this movie. One of the, of course, the ones that sticks out for me is an hilarious scene where they go into a redneck bar, and Eddie Murphy makes a, a bet with Nick Nolte that he can get these guys to talk and I mean Nick Nolton and, and, and playing a cop so Nick Nolton gives him his badge and he knows I mean he's a black guy going into a redneck bar this is not going to go well and Eddie Murphy just owns these guys he takes over the bar and it's just one continuous monologue of hilarious one-liners and him just showing these rednecks who's boss it is a star turn by Eddie Murphy his star was only going to go one way after this movie um, there's so many things to recommend this film. It's you know it's a unique blend of action and comedy, uh, two separate genres that it's incredibly difficult to pull off. You know you either have the action is great but the comedy is lame, or the comedy is fun but the action is thin. And this film is one of the very few to get that blend absolutely 100% right. The action is fantastic. The comedy is fantastic. It just it is the perfect blend of action and comedy. Um, a unique film that has not been surpassed by many in this genre. James Horner's music, as always, amazing. You can actually hear the strains of a future score that he was going to write for uh, Gorky Park. In fact, won an award for this best music. I think it was at the Los Angeles Film Critics Association. The film even won an award for best film or the Grand Prix at the Kong Yuk, um Festival for Walter Hill. And I mentioned Eddie Murphy's nom nomination, uh, Golden Globe nomination. Um, yeah, it's just a pure delight. There's, of course, car chases. It's set in San Francisco and the city itself being a character in the movie. A uh, wonderful bus chase. James Remar as the villain um, is, is, is pure evil. Um, he was really big in the 80s, and I don't know why his star kind of waned, but... Um, he really did a fantastic job in this movie. Apparently, he denied himself sleep so that he would kind of look even more wasted and psychotic. Um, yeah, the old method actors. Uh, and it's got a host of instantly recognizable 80s faces. Brian James, of course, from Blade Runners in it, playing Keo, another cop. Um, uh, Jonathan Banks as a hapless FBI agent is killed. Um, Denise Crosby, Annette O'Toole. Yeah, this is just a delight, this movie, from beginning to end. Um, 48 Hours, the original buddy cop movie, um, replicated by many, but surpassed by few. And I should say, Nick Nolte, I have to be a big shout out to Nick Nolte. He was the star of the movie in terms of he was the name. And, you know, it's incredibly difficult to play the straight man in a comedic duo. Uh, and he does it perfectly. He plays everything straight um, gruff, uh, 
sort of gravelly voiced, um, mean, grumpy, um, cynical cop uh, teamed with Eddie Murphy's irrepressible, you know, kind of joyous, um, energetic, um, sort of motor mouthed convict. So it's kind of a match made in heaven. And that's exactly what the movie is. Yeah. <laughs>